Hello, my name is Laura Smith, and I'm an author of a book called The Berkeley Book, A Story of Hope, Happiness, and Down Syndrome. And I'm sitting here with my mother, Phyllis Smith, and just want to have a little chat with you, Mom, about the Berkeley book and how important you have been to it being written. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Phyllis Smith. I am the mother of five children. I, we had four children, ages uh, six to 12, when Berkeley was born. I was married to Don for 58 years. We had a good life together. He was a good dad to all of our children, and it was a, a fun, good life together. It sure has been. Let's go back to the night Berkeley was born. What were your first impressions of him? He looked very much like our other children. Our children all looked alike as babies and as they were growing up. And he looked very much, especially like our second son. I uh, and um, but he was very small, which I was surprised because he was only five pounds, four ounces, and all of our other children were in the step between seven and eight pounds. So I was a little surprised he was so small, but he looked healthy and everything. So when he was born, you didn't have any idea that anything was really different about him other than that he was small. When did you find out and how did you find out that there might be a bigger problem? Well, later that morning, I tried to feed him and he choked really, really bad. The nurses said, you better not try anymore and contacted the doctor. And they were kind of doing some tests and things. And about probably nine that night, the doctor came in and said, there is definitely a problem. And I think it's probably there's a hole in his esophagus, but I would like to send him to a bigger hospital to do some more testing. And were you able to go with him? No, no. He, I, stay, I stayed in the hospital and they took him on by ambulance. And then you got a phone call. It was about one o'clock at night. I got a phone call from a doctor in Wenatchee. And he said, he said, you know, your baby has Down syndrome. And I said, no, I did not know that. And he said, well, did you look in his face? And I said, of course I looked in his face. He looked just like my other children. And he said, well, he does have um, a hole in from his esophagus into his windpipe. They're connected together and there's a hole between. He also has a hole from his esophagus into his body cavity. And um, he said, I would like to send him on to Children's Hospital in Seattle but uh, but they if and then they'll do testing to make sure he really does have Down syndrome. And um, then when we find that out, uh, it was basically he told me they would not do the surgery if he had Down syndrome, and he would of course die without the surgery. He was no way he could eat. And that was really really upsetting to me. I. I I just didn't know what, you know, it was the middle of the night. I was in the hospital and I was very, very upset. And I think maybe you're tempering the language a little bit because we're um, recording this, but Down syndrome was not the word that he used, was it? No, he said he was retarded. Mm -hmm. And he was quite pointed in asking if you had even looked at him. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, about seven o'clock in the morning, I got a call from a surgeon in Seattle in the children's hospital. And he was asking for permission to do the, the surgery. And I was so relieved because I didn't know what we were going to do because there was no way I was just going to let Berkeley die. But at the same time, I didn't know what I could do. So even though that was a frightening time because you didn't know what to expect, you realized that it didn't matter so much what he looked like or what he would be able to do or not do. Don said to me one day, he said, you know, he's our baby now. We love him. We'll continue to love him. 
And we don't know what 15 or 20 years from now will be. And he said, we just need to live for now and enjoy the time that we have him now. And we did. We fell in love with him. He was the best thing that ever happened to our family. The kids loved him. They enjoyed him. Their friends loved him. Even to this day at 45, he still is a blessing and a joy to everybody that meets him. Thinking back on the doctor who told you that they didn't do surgeries on babies like that, um, how do you feel? Even to this day, it makes me very upset, very angry, actually, that he did not think Berkeley was worth living. And there's been many times I thought, I wish you could see him now. The things he does, the joy he brings to other, others, and you just wanted to let him die and not give him a chance. He was not kind at all to me the way he told me either. It was like, did you look at him? Why, you know, almost like, why would you want to allow someone like this to live? And it was, it was truly upsetting and tis, is to this day, makes me very angry. Um, well, mom, thanks for sitting down with me. I know being uh, recorded is not your comfort zone. So I really appreciate you sitting down and talking to me about some of those hard first moments, uh, things that were told to you that bring back not the greatest memories, but I appreciate you sitting down and having this conversation with me. Thank you. Thank you for writing the Berkeley book. You're welcome.